Amen. Come on, thank God for this choir. Come on, thank God for the choir musicians. We we honor the Lord. We thank God for Jesus. He shed blood on the cross. His blood that washes and cleanses us from all of our sins. We are so glad that Jesus Christ went to an old rugged cross. He hung, bled, and died. That we might have the right to the tree of life. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Died. The Bible says they put him in a borrowed tomb but early Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Got up from the grave, went back to his father. And one day he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We'll be caught up to meet him in the air. And so shall we forever be with the Lord. Isn't that good news? Thank God for good news. Thank God for the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To all of these ministers who are assembled, God bless you. To all of these preachers and their spouses. Uh, to all of the officers and members of Greater Bethel Church, God bless you. To all of our visitors. Uh, so many of you did not stand up. You haven't joined, but you didn't stand up. Uh, amen. That lets me know that you haven't joined. You might as well come on, join. You've been coming a long time. But we greet you today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. To those who are watching on live stream, God bless you today. Uh, to Mother Bird, God bless you. Uh, God bless you. Let's keep Mother Bird lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Let's keep her lifted up in our prayers. And to the First Lady of Greater Bethel, Reverend Gloria Redden, to my partner in life and in ministry. Amen. God has given me a great partner in life and ministry. Thank God for, for the First Lady. Amen. If you're turning your Bibles to... Exodus the 14th chapter we've been there a little while now and I want to if you would read verses 8 and 9 verses 8 and 9 of the 14th chapter of Exodus and just want to again uh, talk to us out of the book Exodus 14 our text comes from verses 8 and 9 I'll be reading from the message Bible let's pray father we thank you for this preaching teaching moment we pray that you would encourage your people give strength to your people and we thank you for what you're going to do have your way help me to preach in jesus name amen exodus 14 8 and 9 God made Pharaoh king of Egypt stubborn, determined to chase the Israelites as they walked out on him without even looking back. The Egyptians gave chase and caught up with them where they had made camp by the sea. All Pharaoh's horse-drawn chariots and their riders all his foot soldiers there at Piharoth, opposite Baal Zephon. I want to preach for a little while from the topic, what to do when you're out of options. What to do when you're out of options. I wish many more of you would come to Bible study and Sunday school. Um, we, we really do talk about some good stuff there. Uh, you can be encouraged and you can get a good outlook on the word of the Lord. And I wish that more of you would come to, to Sunday school, 830, and Bible study two times on Wednesday. 
I still believe the strength of any church is to look at how many people come to Bible study. I think the strength of any church is to be um, um, stooped, steeped in the word of the Lord. I think it's good, it's, it's great, it's important to know the word of God. The Sunday school lesson has been talking about for the last month or so, we've been in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. And in the book of beginnings, we, we are introduced to a few people, one by the name of Abraham. We are introduced to Isaac. And this morning, as I taught Sunday school, we talked about Jacob. And we know that out of Jacob came the 12 tribes of Israel. The younger of the boys, of Jacob's boys, his name was Joseph. And we know that though Joseph had a, a tough life, you know, hated in his family and uh, sold into slavery, lied on and put in jail, uh, we know that Joseph was blessed at the end of the story. Because how many know that sometimes you can't determine how the end is going to come out? That's why you should never give up until you see the end that God has in store for you. I think the problem too many of us have is we give up too soon. We give up too quickly uh, when God's not finished with your story yet. How many know that God's not? He's still. All right. Just don't just don't give up too soon. The Bible says that though Jacob started out with a hard life, he ended up blessed in Egypt. He was so blessed that a heathen king made him second in command. Because when God has in his mind he's going to bless you, who in the world can be against you? Um, you, you, you ought to know as you're sitting there right now, as you sit there right now, that it doesn't matter who likes you or don't like you today. It doesn't matter whether they're rolling their eyes at you, and it doesn't matter if they're sucking their teeth at you. You've got to know that the God you serve is in the blessing business. And if God says I'm blessed, then I'm just blessed. And I've learned not to worry about folk and how they think about me and what they think about. Because I've learned that all that matters is that God knows who I am. And every day of my life, I am blessed. Can I get a witness here? Come on, how many know that you're just blessed today? It doesn't matter what you've been through thus far. Far, you've got to learn how to hang in there with God because it doesn't matter how you start but it matters how you finish the Bible said that he had a rough life but he ended up in Egypt and he was blessed in Egypt and uh, we learned that he stayed in Egypt too long You've got to know that his Egyptian experience was supposed to be a temporary experience. He wasn't supposed to get comfortable there. It was just a temporary fix that God had for him. Uh, so one of the things that I've learned over life is that one of the worst things we can do is to make permanent what God meant to be permanent temporary amen he was in your life and some of it was good while he was in there but now that he's gone it meant that it was only temporary and you've got to learn how to move on in your life when God says move on how many know you've got to learn how to kick some people to the curb? 
because some situations are only temporary situations. Lord, help me today. It reminds me of Elijah when God told Elijah to go to the brook Cherith. Uh, he said, Elijah, I want you to go down there and I'm going to let you drink from the brook and you can, I'm going to command the ravens, uh, amen, the Baltimore ravens to feed you. I'm going to command the ravens to feed you bread and you can drink from the brook. They'll bring you bread and, and meat and you can drink from the brook but eventually the brook dried up and the worst thing you can do is stay beside a dried up brook. You've got to recognize when it's time to move on. So you can't get comfortable with God meant that was only temporary. It was only a season. And you've got to know that seasons change. Summer, spring, winter, and fall. They change. I mean, feel outside. Seasons change. Thank God for the hour that we got this morning. Anybody but me glad about that extra hour we got this morning? Because seasons change, times change, and you've got to learn how to move with the time. The Pharaoh who knew Joseph died because God now has invested that the people of Israel get out of Egypt. So the Bible says that Joseph dies and the Pharaoh that knew Joseph dies. And the new Pharaoh looked out and saw all those Israelites, how they were great in number. He saw how they grew. And the Bible says that the new Pharaoh looked out and saw those numbers and decided that they were a threat to them. He said to his uh, servants, if they would turn on us when war would come, they might join in with our enemies and they might help defeat us. Uh, so now Pharaoh puts in motion a plan, a plan to keep them down. Uh, the first plan was to put them in slavery. Uh, he puts taskmasters over them. Uh, the taskmasters abuse them. Uh, the taskmasters traumatize them, uh, browbeat them, afflicted them uh, because they felt that if we would just make their lives hard, uh, then they would no longer be a threat to us. The second plan uh, that they came up with was uh, to kill all of the male babies when they were born. Uh, the Bible says they came up with that plan. They told the midwives when the women have girls, let the girls stay alive, but, but the boys, kill the boys when the boys are born. Uh, but the Bible says that in spite of the plan of the enemy, of the children, God's people still multiplied and increased and were blessed. And you've got to know today that in spite of the plan of the enemy against you, you are still blessed and you still multiply and you still increase because your life is not in the hands of your enemies, but your life is in the hands of an almighty God. The Bible says they were still blessed. You've got to know you're blessed, and that's when you know that you're blessed. You know that you're blessed when the de deck is stacked against you, but still somehow you made it. Come on, tap your neighbor, tell him I made it. It's been hard sometimes. It's been rough sometimes. The going's been tough sometimes, but still we made it. The Bible says they still multiplied, they increased, 
and they still were blessed. The Bible says that now while all that's going on, there was a man by the name of Amron and a woman by the name of Jochebed. The Bible said they had a little boy and the boy, the Bible says, was a goodly boy. It was something about that child uh, when he was born. And the Bible said that immediately that, that his mother decided, uh, though the law in the land was to kill the male children, uh, the mother made the plan that she was going to hide him. And she hid the baby as long as she could she hid him the bible says for three months and when she could no longer hide him her only option she felt was to make a basket for him make an ark for him she waterproofs the ark with pitch and sends it down the nile river the baby travels down the Nile, helpless, surrounded by things that could have killed him. In the Nile was the Nile crocodile. <laughs> Rhinos, monitor lizards, the Nile perch. All of those things were in the Nile River. But in spite of the potential danger, God kept him safe. Now, there are some of you in here this morning who, when you look back at your life, you were surrounded by some people and some situations that could have taken you out. But aren't you glad today that despite of all that was going on around you, God kept you safe in his arms. Come on, you ought to give somebody a high five on that one. Tell them God kept me safe. There's stuff that could have popped off all around me and did pop off all around you. But how many know that you're here today not because you were so good, but you're here today because of the mercy and the grace of an all-loving God. The Bible says he eventually is found by Pharaoh's daughter. Bible says that when she opens the basket, he begins to cry, and the crying touched her heart. And I don't mind telling y'all that God loves crybabies. It was his crying that touched her heart. Some of y'all too tough to cry. I ain't too tough to cry. Because sometimes you need to have a good cry. Have you ever had a good cry? Crying can be therapeutic. Crying can be healing. Sometimes you need a good cry. The Bible says that here comes Pharaoh's daughter. She falls in love with the baby. He's taken into Pharaoh's palace. And two miracles happen immediately. The first miracle that happened is that he needs to be fed. And when he needs to be fed, they try to find a Hebrew mother to feed the baby. And guess who they find to feed the baby? It was Moses' mother. And not only did she feed the baby, she got paid for feeding the baby. Because how many know that God can pay you? God can get you paid. God can pay you. <laughs> when it's something that comes natural to you. 
she gets paid. The second miracle that happens, little does Pharaoh know that the child he made a law to kill and should have killed is being raised right under his nose. The baby is right in the house. He's being taught by Pharaoh. He's being trained by Pharaoh. He's being educated by Pharaoh to be the deliverer of the people he is brutalizing. Moses grows up in Pharaoh's house. He's the deliverer, but he's growing up in Pharaoh's house. The Bible says now God has to move Moses. He kills an Egyptian. He sees an Egyptian picking on an Israelite. He kills the Egyptian. And then he sees two Israelites fighting. He sees two church members fighting. He plays peacemaker. And one of the Israelites say to him, you think we didn't see what you did to that Egyptian? And when Moses saw that he was found out, Moses had to run for his life. He had to leave town. The Bible says he ends up in Midian with a Midian priest by the name of Jethro. He ends up in Jethro's house and he's employed. Sisters, he has a job. was making a living in Jethro's house. His job was to shepherd sheep. One day when one of the sheep gets lost, he goes looking for the lost sheep. And while in the mountain of God, he sees a bush that's burning but not consumed. And God speaks to Moses out of the bush, tells Moses to go tell Pharaoh, to let my people go. The Bible says that even though Moses didn't see how he was qualified, God told him to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Sends his brother Aaron with him. Batman and Robin of the Old Testament. Sends them to Pharaoh. Gets his marching orders. He does go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And the Bible says that Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he decided he wasn't going to let him go. God sends plague after plague to convince Pharaoh to let God's people go. It's only after the plague of death, the death of the firstborn, that he finally lets the children of Israel go. You remember the story. God said, I'm going to send down death, but he gave Moses instructions for the people that I'm going to send down death, but kill the lamb and take the blood of the lamb and smear it on the doorposts. And when I send death down and whenever death sees the blood, death won't come to that house, but death will do what? Pass over that house. And I don't mind telling you today, aren't you glad about the blood of Jesus Christ? That the only reason we don't get what we probably deserve is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. When God says, I'll see the blood, I'll pass over. I'm glad about the blood today because, you know, I didn't have to bring no, no goat or no lamb to church. You didn't have to bring no pigeon and no, no turtle doves to church. Uh, but you ought to thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ because of that blood today. We have the right to the tree of life. The Bible said that Pharaoh finally let the children of Israel go. Uh, not only did they leave, and you need to read this story, not only did they leave, but they didn't leave empty-handed. Uh, Pharaoh and the, and, the, and the Egyptians paid them to leave. They left with cattle. They left with gold. They left rich because Pharaoh was glad to get them out, out of Egypt. But after letting them go, Pharaoh had a change of heart and decides to go bring them back. 
The Bible says that he said to his servants, why did we let those slaves go? We should have kept them here to continue to serve us. The Bible says the children of Israel go through the wilderness and God takes care of them in the wilderness because God, how many know, will take care of you in your wilderness. It's not that you won't ever have to go through a wilderness. You're going to go through some wilderness in your life. But you got you ought to be glad today and you ought to thank God today that he'll take care of you even in your wilderness. The Bible said he took care of them. He rained manna from on high. They ate the manna, the, the, the angels food. They, they had quail. The Bible said God brought water from rocks. He took good care of them in the wilderness. A cloud of, of fire led them by night and a pillar of cloud led them in the daytime. God took care of them. God rained down the man and all they had to do was go get it and pick it up and eat it. God took good care of them in the wilderness. Their clothes, the Bible says, grew as they grew. Their shoes grew as they grew. God took good care of them. But now here comes Pharaoh's army. He brings 600 of his best chariot men. He brought the rest of his army and he's pursuing after the people of God, the Israelites. He's pursuing after them. Now I'm trying to get to the end of this message, but there's another truth here. Uh, that whenever you get saved, whenever you get saved and you join church and, and you love God and, and God changes your life. He does all of that for us, don't he? he? He changes us. He blesses us. But the truth of the matter is that even though you're saved, it doesn't mean that the devil still won't come after you. He'll still pursue you. He'll try to bring you back to where you were. And the Bible says that he pursued after them. Because the plan was to take them back. So the best thing that happened to them was that they had really no options. What do we do? Mountains on both sides. Do we climb the mountain? No, I, I don't think that's an option. It's too many of us, and there's no way all of us going to climb this mountain. Do we go back to where we came from? No, that's not an option. Because I don't believe that God would bring me out in order to let me go back. Well, I wish y'all would help me with that one. If he brought you out, he meant for you to stay out. If he delivered you, he meant for you to stay delivered. And I've got news for you. Ain't nothing back there you need anyhow. Ain't nothing back there I want. Ain't nothing back there I need. Come on, think about it. Think about some folk that were with you. And now they want to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. You've got to make up in your mind that if God brought me out yesterday, he can keep me out today. And I don't care what you say. I'm determined I'm not going back. <laughs> ain't nothing back there I want ain't nothing back there I need that's why some of y'all need to stay off Facebook yeah, 
Snapchat, Instagram. Because if they were meant to be with you, they'd be with you. There's a reason they not with you now. And you have to make up in your mind you ain't going back. That's not an option. Do we swim? No. Never learned how to swim. A lot of us here. I, I don't think the option is for us, us to swim. It's too late to build a big boat. Noah been dead. And he took the plans with him. So we can't build a big boat to take us over. What will they do? The question is, should, should be what should they do? The question is what should they do? Well, I came to give you a few answers as to what they should do. When you're all out of options, the first thing you should do is to make up in your mind, I'm going to trust God. I'm, I'm, I'm all out of answers. I, I've tried everything I know how to do. All I, all I got is I'm going to trust God. All I got is my faith in God. That's all I got. All, all I have is I'm going to believe God. I'm going to look to God. I'm, I'm going to wait on God. Because I believe that my God is still able to make a way out of no way. He brought me out this far. And I believe he can keep me out. I ain't going back to Egypt. I'm out of options. With that army approaching, they only have one option is to trust God. Look what God does. The Bible says the cloud that was leading them got up and went behind them. And stood between them and Pharaoh's army. And somebody ought to praise God today. Because the only thing that's standing between you and your enemy. Is the presence of an almighty God. The cloud is between Pharaoh. But not only that. The cloud is darkness to Pharaoh, but is light to the children of God. <laughs> All night long, Pharaoh's army didn't come near him. All night long. The second thing they did, God told Moses to lift up your hands over the sea. And God caused an east wind to blow all night and split the sea. Now, now some of y'all I know, you laid back, you're easy going, and you know, you haven't been used uh, to, to, to noisy church and, and the church with movement. But I come to tell you today, there's something that happens when you decide to lift up your hands. Now, now, now I, I know all of y'all might not get with that today. But if you have a situation you're going through right now, and you don't know the outcome of that situation right now, I dare you just to lift up your hands over that situation. Come on, lift up that hand. And tell God, I just want to thank you. I, I need some more. I need some more vow. I need some more vow. Can you give me some more vow? Come on, just, just lift up those hands. You, you see, it's, it's just not you lifting up your hands because I'm telling you to lift them up. 
But when you know that you know that you know that you know that God is still able to do anything but fail, you ought to just be able to lift up those holy hands and open up your mouth and tell God, I just believe that you're still able to make a way out of no way. And I don't care what the devil says. I believe that my God is still in charge of my life. Come on, lift those hands and open up that mouth. Tell God, thank you. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Something happens. Something happens when the people of God begin to lift up those hands. When Moses lifted up those hands, God caused the sea to open up and they walked through on dry land. Somebody help me lift up those hands and magnify God. Come on, come on, think about your situation. Come on, think about what you're going through right now. Think about what the devil done tried to do to you. And he couldn't do it to you. Think about the hard place you're in right now. I dare you to lift those hands and tell God, I just want to thank you. Come on, come on. All, all I'm trying to tell you, all I'm trying to tell you, all I'm trying to tell you, just like Moses lifted up his hands, if you would lift up your hands, just try it, just try it today. If you would lift up those hands and speak to your situation, God will work a miracle for you. God will work a miracle for you. Come on, who needs a miracle today? Who needs God to work a miracle in your life? <laughs> look, look. Look, look, God, God told Moses, God told Moses, lift up your hands because the enemy you see today, you're not going to see them again no more. I'm going to take care of your enemy. Come on, lift those hands and tell God, thank you. That's why the Bible says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I'm going to bless him with everything I've got. I'm going to bless him with my hands. I'm going to bless him with my mouth. I'm going to bless him with my feet. I'm going to bless him with everything I have. Because God is worthy to be praised today. How many know that God is able today? Come on, do you know he's able today? How many know that God is a good God today? How many know that God is a great God today? Lift your hands, open your mouth, give God glory. Well, 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 
well, I'm just about done. I'm just about done. But, but, but you know, let me tell you a little secret. What the devil said, what the devil said about you, he said, if I put a little trouble in their life, they're not going to be able to praise your God this morning. He said, if I just mess with their money, they're not going to praise you. If I mess with their body, they're not going to praise you. If you mess with their children, they're not going to praise you. But I don't know about anybody else. I came to make a liar out of the devil. I've got a made up mind that I've got to praise my God. I don't have a choice. I'm out of options. All I got is my praise. That, that's all I got. That's all I got. Come on. Come on, tell your neighbor, that's all I got today. All I got is my praise. The devil may take everything else, but leave me my praise. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together come on people of god praise the name of the lord out of options I don't know about anybody else I thank God that he took all of my options away he, he took he closed every door to bring me to a point where he was the only option I had stand all over the church come on stand all over the church if God is your only option today if God is your only option today I want you to come on to this altar right now. If you're going to make God your only option today, he's all you got. He's all you got. You're going to make him your only option today. He's your only option. Come, come on, come on. Come on. I'm waiting for you. Oh, oh. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless, Bless the Lord. Lord. Yes, 
great things. He has done great things. He has, he has done great things. He has done great things. Microphone stop <laughs> that you wasn't going to receive his word today. But how many know that the devil is a liar today? He is the father of lies. And sometimes one of the best things God can do is take away your choices. Now I know people say, Well, you 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 have free will. I know you have free will. But you know, I've known free will to get people in trouble. Yes. <laughs> Choose the wrong thing. It can get you in trouble. And what God does sometimes, he takes away all the other choices. He makes it easy for you. He lets you get between a rock and a hard place. And all you can do is trust God. You ever been there? I've been there. All I could do was put my trust in my God. He'll, he'll do that every now and then. But I come to tell you, not only is he the only option, he's the best option. Anybody know he's the best option today? He's the best option. I'm going to choose God every single time. Because I know God's way is still the best way. Even though I think sometimes I know more than God. I think I know better than God. I've learned that God's way is still the best way. Come on, take the hand of the person that you're standing next to. And I want you to give that hand a little, a little squeeze. And I want you to thank God for that hand that you're holding because that hand may be out of options today tried everything and nothing seems to be working but today but today my faith looks up to my God I'm going to trust them that, that's why I like that song I, Father I stretch my hands to thee yes. no other help that I know if thou would withdraw thyself from me whether shall I go all I have is God God in the morning God in the noonday God in the midnight hour give that hand a little squeeze and thank God for the hand that you're holding God is on your side. Right now, I want you to give that hand a little squeeze. Squeeze victory into that hand right now. Victory is already yours. Squeeze victory into that hand right now. The devil is a liar. Victory is yours today. The devil is a defeated foe. Come on, give that hand a little squeeze. Squeeze victory into that hand. Victory is already yours. In the name of Jesus. God, we just want to thank you. We thank you for the lessons that we learn out of your word today. We thank you, God, that when we can't see a way 
that you can make a way out of no way. And God, this is not the first time you've done that for us. You keep right on doing that for us over and over and over again. You keep right on blessing us. Every time we turn around, you keep right on blessing us. So God, we thank you that the devil couldn't do what he tried to do. We thank you that you wouldn't let his plan work today. That you brought us out with your power. So God, right now, I'm thanking you for the hand that I'm holding. We touch and agree right now that you're working it out right now as we stand here. That you're working it out and we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory because we know that the battle is already won in Jesus name open doors that no man can shut in Jesus name make a way out of no way in Jesus name touch sick bodies right now in Jesus name encourage hearts right now in Jesus name make us strong where we reek in Jesus name work it out for us and we thank you and we praise you because victory is already ours in Jesus name we thank you in Jesus name we praise you in Jesus name we give you glory in Jesus name amen amen and amen come on hug your neighbor come on hug your neighbor tell him it's gonna be all right come on hug your neighbor tell him it's gonna be all right 